You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, welcome to Constituent Marking with Fred Long on Proof Text. I'm Fred Long, and we're looking at 1 Corinthians 14.23. Uh, we're, we're going, we're slogging through the text step by step. This is, this, th- these verses are fascinating. They betray a, a, a need to pay attention to the context, to the development of the argument, the use of connectors, and these kinds of things. So uh, that's what we do. When we do constituent marking, we're actually paying careful attention to uh, the function of words and cla- uh, phrases and clauses in the sentence, which we're navigating the sentence. So uh, let me read the text and then do some marking, and I'll try to explain that for you, those of you who might be listening only. Aeon un, okay, there's two connectors. Aeon is a subordinating conjunction, if, and un is a um, coordinating conjunction, uh, indicating kind of a new development and an inference being drawn. So, Therefore, if, and then we have a ecclesia olon, sun elfe, sun elfe e ecclesia olon, e ecclesia olon is single underlined, that means the whole church. And then you have sun elfe, comes together. That's from sun ercome, it's a subjunctive, aeon takes a subjunctive. So we see a stem change there, elf. Um, That's from erk, uh, erkome goes to elf, soon elf, soon adds a withness to it. So so therefore, if the whole assembly, so here we have the whole Christian assembly comes comes together in one mind, epito avto, epito avto means like together. So it's really stressing this togetherness. So... um, Epito of to is a prepositional phrase. I put a parentheses around that. Ke, and, so here we have something else added to that, and pontes. Pontes, that's the subject. La lucin, uh, and all, so both of those are single underline. I cut off la, la lucin. Uh, that's from la leo. This is also subjunctive, okay? So it's being also governed by aeon. This is a compound aeon clause. So aeon means if. So this is setting up a conditional sentence. It's got two if parts to it. So if the church, whole church comes together and all speak in tongues or languages. And moreover... So here we have a third part to it. So we have, uh, this is adding a distinctive development. Uh, So the if part is still continuing. And it's going to end right there. And moreover, uninitiated, idiote e apestu, is elthon tosin. They, they, and, and uninitiated or unbelievers, Come in. Enter in. Okay. So this is a three-part prodesis, the if part. So step one, let's let's step this. The whole church comes together. Two, they're speaking in tongues. And three, uninitiated or unbelieving people enter in. Okay, that's all the supposition. So given this scenario... If this is what is indeed taking place, uh, that's a bad looking three. Uh, if indeed they, this, all these are taking place, what happens? Uk erusin oti meniste. Will they not say? Will they not say? So erusin is a future. From ero um, to speak, it is a liquid stem. The stem ends with lambda rho, mu or nu. And, and so when, when you form the future tense, you typically have a sigma 
that's rejected because of the rho and it shows up, uh, there's a compensatory lengthening in the circumplant, circum, circumflex. Will they not say this? Here's that, um, I think I would offset that with a colon. Will it not say this? And then the direct statement is menace the, menace the. That's a middle formed verb, um, menome, to be in a religious frenzy. Now, oftentimes that's translated as mad. That doesn't capture it. Nope, it's um, you're in a religious, pagan religious uh, moment. <laughs> so if you meet together, you're speaking in tongues, all are speaking in, in tongues or languages, and you have these outsiders, unbelievers come in, will they not say this? You are in a, 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 a frenzy. You are in a religious frenzy. Now, yeah, that's how I translate that verse. That's how I'd, I'd mark the verse, okay? So uh, the ooh, this ook here, is actually part of the question, right? So you have, uh, you have a ooh with the question. And remember the rule of MNOP with regard to questions with uh, negative adverbs, may or ook, uh, may is used, the, it means no as well, and ook means no. A expects a negative answer, but ooh expects a positive answer. So just remember the rule of MNOP if you can't remember that rule. So you can ask questions in Greek that expect yes or no answers. Not all answers are that way, but you can mark them that way. And this one is indeed marked expecting a positive answers. Answer. So in English, we would say, will they not say this? You all are a crate. You all are in a religious frenzy. Yes. Yes, they will. Okay. All right. Well, this is quite a significant verse. Uh, notice the, the un um, marks this as a distinctive development in the argument, and he's drawing a further inference. He's basically laying out a scenario here, okay? So this first scenario has three steps to it, as we saw, and involves tongue speaking and the very unfavorable observation by pagan unbelievers or outsiders that indeed you're, you're in a religious frenzy. Okay, in the next two verses, we'll see a positive example of prophesying. And uh, hope this is helpful and look forward to have you listen and watch next time. Take care. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glossa House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.